Hello and welcome to this series of talks about discrimination and unlawful acts under the Equality Act 2010. My name is Declan O'Dempsey and I've prepared these talks with my colleague Catherine Cassily. We're both from Cloisters Chambers. The talks are going to cover direct, indirect, discrimination arising from disability, failure to make reasonable adjustments, harassment, victimisation, instructing, aiding and uh, inducing uh, discrimination and unlawful acts under the Equality Act. Direct discrimination occurs when the respondent treats the claimant less favourably than the respondent treats or would treat others because of a protected characteristic. That's the effect of section 13.1. Normally you can't justify direct discrimination. However, in the case of age, you are able to justify direct uh, discrimination or less favourable treatment if the respondent can show that the treatment was in pursuit of a legitimate aim, which will have to be of a public interest uh, nature, and secondly, that the treatment was a, an appropriate means of achieving that aim. And finally, uh, that it was a reasonably necessary means of achieving that legitimate aim. We'll come back to what that justification test means when we talk about indirect discrimination. In the case of disability, where a disabled person is treated more favourably than a non-disabled person, that can't form the basis of a claim for direct discrimination by the non-disabled person. As in all these areas, you need to ask whether an exception applies and whether a genuine occupational requirement applies. Less favourable treatment requires a comparison to be made. A comparison has to be made between how the respondent has treated other workers or would have treated them in similar circumstances. That's by virtue of section 23. In the case of the protected characteristic of disability, the circumstances must include the claimant's abilities by section 23.2. And in the case of sexual orientation discrimination, civil partnership is not to be treated as materially different to marriage as a result of section 23.3. The Act talks about hypothetical comparators because it's not always possible to identify an actual person whose uh, circumstances are the same or not materially different. So a person identified as an actual comparator may have um, circumstances that are not materially the same, that will be useful however for the tribunal to enable them to construct a hypothetical comparator and that may involve considering elements of the treatment of several people whose circumstances are similar to those of the claimant but not the same. And the tribunal, looking at all those elements together, can conclude that the claimant was less favourably treated than a hypothetical comparator would have been. Less favourable uh, treatment involves um, being deprived of a choice or uh, excluded from an opportunity. In each case, what a reasonable person would describe as a choice or an opportunity. And the respondent can't eliminate the existence of less favourable treatment by compensating for the less favourable treatment. The Employment Code uh, says that it's simply not possible under the Act for the employer to balance or eliminate less favourable treatment by offsetting it against more favourable treatment. So for example, extra pay to make up for uh, loss of status. There are special rules in relation to uh, less favourable treatment uh, and uh, marriage and civil partnerships, uh, as we've 
seen uh, in relation to race and segregation. Segregation on, because of race is uh, a form of less favourable treatment. And there are then special rules in relation to um, sex discrimination. So under rule, under section 13.7, there is an exclusion uh, from uh, less favourable treatment, of treatment based uh, on breastfeeding. And where the claimant is a man, you have to ignore the special treatment of women for pregnancy or childbirth, and that's a result of section 13.6b. The Employment Code makes clear at 3.11 that the protected characteristic needs to be a cause of the less favourable treatment, but it doesn't need to be the only or even main cause. Sometimes it's going to be obvious what the um, cause is. When you ask um, whether somebody who has put up a sign uh, saying gypsies and travellers need not apply, you don't need to look for the racial uh, ground of the treatment beyond what is said. But most times you will have to ask the question, why did the respondent treat the claimant less favourably? You'll ask that where what has been done is not inherently discriminatory. And it's important to remember that the motive or intention for the treatment is irrelevant to this question. You're trying to see what the reason for the treatment uh, is and not the motive for it. So the question you're asking is what is the effective or predominant cause for the treatment? The phrase because of is broad enough to include less favourable treatment because of association with a protected characteristic. Now, that means that it will cover association with another person with the protected characteristic or simply association with the protected characteristic itself. And that can be an erroneous attribution. So if somebody discriminates against me because uh, they believe that I'm French when in fact I'm Irish, uh, it makes no difference that they've made a um, mistaken assumption about my nationality is still because of race.